Okay, what is the greatest round we've ever seen? Bob, let's start with you. What's what our listeners want to know? What the greatest round you've ever seen with your own eyes is, and what the greatest round you've ever witnessed? You know, maybe through the TV. Now, a lot of these, you know, we've been especially you because you've covered so many majors. You've seen a lot with your own eyes. Yeah, uh, I have. Um, I was going to say watching you play at Goat Hill last year where you made <laughs> – how many birdies did you make that day, honestly? No, I, I birdie on the day? Yeah. I birdied Ooh. nine at Goat Hill and then another – Not a big deal. Yeah, and then another just, just six. Just half the holes. Yeah, half the holes. And then another six in the afternoon at Aviera. So I had 15 birdies in, in our 36 holes. That was pretty good. Imagine if we if we had played played the the long tees, the back tees. No, I'm just kidding. You were you were fantastic that day. That was that was that was really impressive to watch. But okay, so the greatest round I've ever witnessed personally um, was Stephen Ames' final round, 2006 Players Championship. I have never seen anybody control a golf ball like he did that day. There was one. He made one mistake uh, with a double bogey on ten. I think it was. Other than that, I have never seen a guy hit it to the right side of the flag, hit it to the right side of the fairway, uh, putt like he did. I mean, he beat that field. That was the best field in golf. 48 of the top 50 players in the world. That was the, when they had the big six, and he beat them by six shots. Six shots. So to me, that was just like, I, I've never seen anything like that. It looked programmed, right? It just like yeah. hitting it to the right spot all day, right side of the flag. It looked like it was scripted almost. It's unbelievable yeah. when they, when when the best in the world kind of get in that zone. It's insane. Adam, what's the best round you've ever seen with your own eyes? So I mentioned I was in Ireland, and so I was actually on the grounds at Royal Portrush back for the for the second and third round. And during the third round, Shane Lowry shot an eight under 63. And the conditions that day were very not Ireland, not traditional to Ireland. It was like playing in a dome, but there was so much pressure on Shane Lowry, looking for his first major championship, playing in Northern Ireland. You know, you know what the party was like afterwards, but the party during it for fans going nuts. And he had the ball on an absolute string that day. I was actually sitting in the 18th hole grandstand when, when he left the putt for 62 just short in the jaws from about 20 feet. And I'll never forget leaving the grounds that day. About 50,000 people, back when you could walk with 50,000 people, mm -hmm. were chanting Lowry's name, and he was waving. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen in person, and to actually see him play probably seven or eight holes that day, it was something I'll never forget. Yeah, to do it in a major, in front of your home crowd, the energy must have been just crazy. For me, it was, I was just sitting here thinking back on, you know, okay, was it a, a Masters that I was at? It was, I couldn't, or was it a round I called? You know, Bob and I were on the grounds at Augusta a few years ago where Charlie Hoffman shot 65, right. I think, on the Thursday, Bob. And I mean, the, the, uh, the average score that day was 74 point something. He was almost 10 shots better than the field that day. It was, it, it was insane. And Bob and I both looked at each other and we said, that might be the best round of golf we see this year, that, that opening 65. Uh, but for me, I think I go back to 2018 Kapalua. I walked 36 holes with Dustin Johnson on the weekend at Kapalua. And I mean, it's a par 73. And he goes 66, then 65. He eagles the par 4 12th two days in a row. He's driving par 4s. He turned Kapalua into a pitch and putt. I mean, one day, I think he had five eagle putts in one of those rounds on the Saturday or the Sunday. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was like he was playing golden tee. It was absolutely ridiculous. And I remember doing the post-round interview with DJ and saying to him, you know, at this level, and I mean, he was as hot as he's ever been. He's probably similar to that same type of heat level right now, coming off a Masters victory, a win in the European Tour. Like, now he is the guy again. And I remember talking to him going, with, at this level of play, why can't we see somebody win eight, nine, ten times in one season again like Tiger used to do, et cetera? And he said, yeah, you know, at this level, I think I can win every time I play blah, blah, blah. A couple months later, he falls down a set of stairs. And, and, that, right, and that's the end of it. So for me, guys, uh, that weekend's the greatest thing I've ever seen. We only got about a minute left. Bob, what about TV? What's the best if you're sitting on the couch? You, anything pop to mind? Uh, yeah, I remember watching Jim Furyk shoot 58 of the 2016 Travelers. And what people forget about that, Jim Furyk was 46 years old when he shot 58. So it's not like he was wow. a spring chicken. So that's pretty and cool. And had that's a 59 under his belt. Already, you're right. Unbelievable. Skulls, what do you think? Off the, just uh, off the T, uh, TV, anything uh, pop to mind? 
Yeah, uh, well, off the TV, the first thing that honestly came to mind, and this is more of a story as well, is is Tiger Woods at the 2008 U.S. Open, the way he finished that third round as well, making eagle on the 13th hole, making a birdie on the 16th hole, which should have been a bogey or worse, sort of blading a chip and bouncing and going in. And then that eagle he made on the 18th hole, I'll never forget the celebration. He was in so much pain, just a simple fist pump. That was uh, the greatest round I've seen on TV. Yeah, for TV, it's... it's well, for t- yeah, and on a broken leg. For TV, it's tough because almost everything Tiger did somehow had something special. Like, what about the 2000 U.S. Open? Like, yeah. I mean, he played a golf tournament by himself. Absolutely played a golf tournament by himself. Yeah. But if we're looking at just like a single round or specific moment in time, maybe the 2000 Pebble Beach Pro-Am, which was kind of foreshadowing a little. A little. He was seven shots behind Matt Gogol with seven, shot, with seven holes to go. Seven back with seven holes. He eagles 15, birdie 16, par 17, birdies 18, and wins the championship. As Gogol just melts and goes in reverse, right? Like, that was incredible to watch that. That's when Tiger had, like, just his presence on the leaderboard and guys. And, and of course, Bob, that summer you saw a six iron that you still think is the greatest shot you've ever seen, you, you know, yeah. that summer. That out of the bunker, out of the Glen Abbey, uh, you know, in Tiger Woods, I'll never forget, I was standing behind 18, and he was out in the bunker, and I thought for sure he was going to lay up or at least play to the middle of the green. And as soon as he took his stance, he went, whoa, <laughs> look where he's aiming. Like, he's aiming at the flag. <laughs> and uh, and saw that shot go off, man. It was it was unbelievable to see it, how uh, how, how close it came to being, um, you know, it flew where, where it lands and where it f- where it came in, you know, it's thought for a moment, okay, maybe it's going to back up to about two inches, but still, like, just one of the greatest shots I've ever seen in clutch conditions. Rainy weather, too. Not not the best of weather, either. Let's hope uh, we get to see him make those shots again at some point. 